dipole moments and percent ionic character. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of a few things as we get started here. So we're going to talk about covalent versus ionic bonds. And so you should have already, you know, had some in introduction to this idea. But we're going to go through just to remind ourselves so that the rest of this makes more sense. All right, so co remember that covalent bonds are formed when atoms share electrons. Okay, so sharing electrons results in covalent bonds. And nonpolar covalent bonds form between atoms of equal electronegativity. So if the electronegativity is exactly equal, then it's a fully nonpolar covalent bond. An equal sharing of electrons results in an electron cloud that's not distorted, or we also call that polarized in any way. So basically just equal sharing. And in general, carbon-hydrogen bonds are considered nonpolar, even though there is a small electronegativity difference between carbon and hydrogen. But here's just a little cartoon showing the electron cloud around two carbon atoms, which would have the same electronegativity. And so the electron cloud is undistorted and nice and symmetrical, nice and even around both carbon atoms. Okay. So now what about ionic bonds, okay? And these involve the transfer of one or more electrons from one atom to another. So for instance, sodium transferred one electron and gave it to the chlorine atom. So now we have a chloride anion, negatively charged, and a positively charged sodium cation. And so electrostatic attractions hold these two ions together. And also notice that the electron cloud is larger around the anion due to the extra electron. Okay, so now last, polar covalent bonds. So this is still a covalent bond, electrons are shared, but now it's an unequal sharing, okay? And this results in a, in a polarized electron cloud. So for instance, oxygen is more electronegative, so it's gonna pull electron density toward itself and away from the carbon, for instance, in this particular bond. And we call that polarized electron density, and it's an unequal sharing, but they are still sharing. Okay, so now when we have an asymmetrical charge distribution or a polarized electron cloud around a molecule, then we say that that molecule has a dipole moment. And these are just areas of positive and negative charge that are within the molecule. So HF, for instance, hydrogen fluoride or hydrofluoric acid if we put it in water, this guy has partially positively charged hydrogen and more electron density around the fluorine, which results in a partial negative charge. So you can see this polarized electron cloud. So we would say that hydrogen fluoride has a molecular dipole. And the equation relating this dipole moment to the partial charge and the distance between the charges is this one. Okay, so here's our dipole moment. So the Greek letter mu is our symbol for dipole moment. Capital Q is our partial charge. Okay, and that's going to be in coulombs. And the distance is R. So that's going to be the distance between the charges in the molecule, the partial charges in the molecule. And I also forgot to mention that the dipole moment has units of Debye's. Okay, now the conversion for Debye's is down here below. So one Debye is actually 3.3356 times 10 to the negative 30 Coulomb meters. Okay, and so our distance between the two partial charges is meters, our charge is Coulombs. So now we can see how we can cancel out our units and solve for whatever we need. We have a system to kind of determine roughly how ionic a certain bond is, okay? And percent ionic character is calculated by taking the actual partial charge in the molecule and dividing it by the charge of an electron, okay? And basically all this is is here's the partial charge dividing it by the quote-unquote whole charge or the fundamental charge, which is the charge on an electron, okay? And then we're going to multiply it by 100 to get a percent. So percent ionic character, we're going to take our partial charge, all right? And we're going to divide it by a whole charge and multiply it by 100, and that'll give us our percent ionic character. Okay, so let's think about this for just a second. So if we have a completely ionic bond, in other words, the partial charge will be equal to 1 
or a whole, you know, so it'll be equal to a whole electrons worth, then that would be a totally ionic bond and the percent ionic character would be equal to 100%. Now, a bond that is completely covalent, so no polarization, nothing, just totally equal sharing, covalent, no partial charges in the molecule, that's going to have a percent ionic character equal to zero. You know, bonds in molecules are rarely that uh, black and white. So 100% covalent or 100% ionic is, is not the usual situation. And so bonds in molecules in which partial charges are present are called polar covalent bonds. Okay, so let's look at how we can calculate this percent ionic character. So let's do this using an example. So hydrogen fluoride has a dipole moment of 1.826 devise. Okay, so remember the conversion factor for devise, and that's in the gas phase. Now we're going to calculate the percent ionic character for the HF bond given that the bond distance is 92 picometers. Okay, now first thing we're going to do is figure out what this charge is, what this partial charge is. Okay, now you notice that we are given the dipole moment, so that's mu, and we're given the bond distance, which is 92 picometers, okay? Now, we're not in the correct units because the bond distance is in picometers. We need meters. And the dipole moment is in device, and we need Coulomb meters. So let's make sure that we convert all of our values to the correct units, okay? So we're going to convert our device to Coulomb meters, and we're going to convert our picometers to meters, okay? And so here are the two conversion factors. So why don't you just take a second and pause the presentation and try doing those two conversions, just to check yourself. Okay, so here we are. So converting from devise to Coulomb meters, okay? So 1.826 devise, one devise is equal to 3.3356 times 10 to the negative 30 Coulomb meters. That should be 30, okay? And we're gonna end up with 6.0908 times 10 to the negative 30 Coulomb meters. Okay, and let's go ahead and convert our picometers. Okay, we're going to end up with 9.2 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. All right, so our conversion factor for picometers to meters, this is something that you should have in your head. All right, so now let's just plug everything in. Okay, so 6.0908 times 10 to the negative 30 Coulomb meters, that's the result of our dipole moment calculation and 9.2 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. And when we do that math, we're going to end up with 6.6204 times 10 to the negative 20 coulombs, OK? And so that's our partial charge, all right? Now, we're going to take that partial charge, and we're going to plug it in to our percent ionic character. We're going to divide it by the charge of a whole electron and multiply it by 100. And when we do that, we're going to end up with 41%. So do you think it'd be reasonable to classify this bond as essentially ionic? So think about that. Okay. So let's add another piece of information. All right. So the sodium chloride bond in the gas phase is 79% ionic. Okay. So did that information change your answer? So just think about why or why not. Would you classify it more as ionic, more nonpolar covalent, or actually polar covalent, which is what it actually is.